Thanks for tuning in to Christ Fellowship Church on YouTube. We're so blessed that you've chosen to take some time out of your day to spend it with us. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. Thank you. Well, this is my... (laughs) Thank you. This is my first time to teach this year, so if everybody all year stays excited as you are, we'll be in good shape. Amen. Hey, we love you. We love your church. If I lived down here full time, this is certainly where I would go to church. And so I think you're in a a good place. All right. (laughs) Um, I I just want to share something out of my heart with you before I bring you the word that's on my heart tonight. I've been in a serious relationship with God for about 45 years. And now, I was born again a long time before that, but I was one of those lukewarm, half in, half out. You know what I mean. But in 1976, God really touched my life. I guess I became hungry enough to be willing to do anything to have my life change. And sometimes we have to get to that point where we're not just asking God to solve all of our problems, but we're willing to do anything he wants us to do in order to have the peace, have the joy, have the healing that we need in our life. And I know there's a lot of you here tonight that God's fixed a lot of your problems, but there's people here too that have You've got some really desperate situations going on in your life. You're hurting so bad that you wouldn't even know how to express it to anybody. And I just want to tell you, and I mean this sincerely, there is no problem that you have that God can't solve. There's an answer to every problem we have found in the Word of God. Now, I'm also going to tell you that these kinds of changes don't usually, sometimes they do, but they don't usually take place overnight, which means you need to be committed to learn and grow and be with people that are like-minded with you, and little by little, God delivers us from our enemies. When I first really started submitting my behavior to God and really wanting to change, I don't think there's anybody in this room that could have been any bigger mess than I was. And I'm telling you, if you've got a problem, I've either got a book or a teaching CD on it. (laughs) One of the two. And so, I. They've got some resources out there somewhere, but it's, I've lived it all. I I didn't just go buy a sermon book and make up a bunch of stuff to teach people. I've lived it, and and I wanna tell you that the Word of God works in your life. It works. But I also wanna say that you have to work it. You and God are partners. He's not going to just do everything for you while you sit back and do nothing. God will show you what to do. He will give you the grace to do it, but you have to do the doing. (laughs) And the problem that we have, many of us who sat in church for years and years and years, is not that we don't know what to do. We just still haven't gotten around to doing it. And you know, just because you have something underlined in your Bible doesn't mean you know it. (laughs) Amen? Amen. And so, um, I'm actually gonna be teaching some things out of this book tonight called Overload, because most of the population is stressed out and overloaded. Well, let me just ask, how many of you feel like you're too busy? Come on, I don't want any of this stuff. Let me see you feel. Well, how many of you intend to do something about it? 
Not very many hands went up that second question. <laughs> See, we, we hope magically everything is gonna change, but I can tell you as far as the world, it's probably gonna get worse. And I'm not being negative, but I think it's probably going to get worse and it's getting worse pretty fast. And so I finally figured out several years ago that I had to be the one to change. I had to make decisions about how I was gonna change my life instead of just feeling like I had to do everything that the world wanted me to do. Nowhere in the Bible does God call us to be busy. He calls us to be fruitful, to bear good fruit. And we can be busy doing a lot of things that aren't doing us or anybody else any good at all. Amen? Amen. And then a book that I just want to encourage you to get, Healing the Soul of a Woman. Thank you. And um, it's how to get over emotional wounds. You know, you can dress it up and take it to church, but if you're all wounded and bruised and bleeding inside, then it's gonna affect every area in your life. And it especially affects relationships. And guys, if you want this book, now I know it's pink, <laughs> but all you have to do is take a piece of tape, <laughs> put it right over that. It's harder for a man to admit that his soul needs healing, but there's plenty of you out there. All right. Father, I pray that you would soften people's hearts tonight and that they would, even if they don't like what they hear, if they know it's for them, that they'll receive it. And I pray that everybody who hears something they need will, by your grace, go home and put it to use in their life. We thank you for no disturbances. The enemy is bound. And your word is not going to fall on deaf ears. We thank you for the work that you're doing in here tonight by the power of the Holy Spirit. If anybody's here that's not saved, we pray right now for their salvation. I pray that sick people will be healed while the word is going forth and that empty people will be filled. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, I could have given this about four or five different titles, and so we'll just call it, uh, let's see, what shall we call it? Uh, how about take better care of yourself? <laughs> How's that? Um, first of all, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. And I want you to really pay attention to this scripture word by word. Do you not know that your bodies, everybody say my body, <laughs> are temples of the Holy Spirit? That means that God lives in you. I mean, how can we just kind of not have any reaction to that? <laughs> God lives in you. You are the home of God. You're sitting here tonight. God is living in you. You go to work and you're different than other people because God is living in you. You can do things and endure things that other people can't unless they also know Christ because God lives in you. I think we need to go look at ourselves in the mirror about 12 times a day and just say, God lives in here. Because see, we just feel too plain and ordinary and we're not. You are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. God has given us the gift 
of his Holy Spirit. Jesus said when he left, he told his disciples, you'll be better off if I go away. <laughs> well, how could that be possible? How could anybody be better off if Jesus went away? What could be better than having breakfast with Jesus or dinner with Jesus? He said, because I will send you another comforter, a strengthener, a helper. God has sent his spirit to help us and not just to help us in our spiritual endeavors, but please understand this tonight. God is interested in every single facet of your life. And we need to stop dividing secular from sacred and realize that as a child of God, as someone carrying God around with them, that every, now listen to me, everything that you do, if you do it in the name of Jesus and for his glory, the most ordinary things like going grocery shopping can become a sacred act. That was a big change for me when I found that out. That I didn't have to just try to be spiritual and then try to take care of all these dumb, ordinary things that, you know, weren't worth anything. Everything is important to God. What you wear is important to God because you represent him everywhere you go. Your entertainment is important to God. The friends that you choose to spend time with is important to God. What you do with your money is important to God. He cares about you and everything that you care about. You are so loved unconditionally by God. You are not your own. Now we're going to get into it a little bit. Uh oh. Well, if I'm not my own, then whose am I? <laughs> you were bought at a price. Who can tell me what that price was? The blood of Jesus Christ purchased our salvation and purchased the freedoms that we enjoy and made it possible for the Holy Spirit to come. One of the reasons why we're better off with the Holy Spirit than if Jesus was right here with us tonight in person is because Jesus lived in a body just like I do and I can't be here and be in California at the same time. Now, I can by television, but matter of fact, I can go all over the place at one time on TV. But I can only be in one place at one time, just like Jesus could. But the Holy Spirit can be everywhere at the same time, ministering to everybody. I would almost be tempted to just stand here for the 40 minutes I have and just try to get you to realize how amazing it is that God lives in you. Boy, if we just thought about that more, we would never hear the words, I can't, come out of our mouths. Because anything God wants you to do, you can do it. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. How many of you don't get enough sleep? <laughs> How many of you eat too much junk? <laughs> you know, a man came up to me the other day, I was at, out at the mall here and 
he said, oh, I just saw you at Christ Fellowship a couple of weeks ago. And I said, well, I haven't been there for a year. <laughs> and he said, no, they were playing some kind of video or something. I don't know, did you guys play a video of when I was recently? Okay, well, he said, and I thought this was a great compliment. He said, I really liked it. He said, I heard th things from you that you wouldn't expect to hear in church. <laughs> and I thought, yes. <laughs> See, because there are things that we don't talk about in church that we need to talk about in church. <laughs> so I'm just gonna tell you, you need to get good sleep you need to drink plenty of water. You need to quit living on junk. You say, well, I don't know. It sounds to me like you're meddling. Well, <laughs> no, I'm being led by the Spirit because listen to me. God lives in you, and if you don't take care of your body, you're destroying His temple. And he needs you to work through, you are important to the growth of the kingdom of God. As a believer, everywhere that you go, and the Bible says this, we are God's personal representatives and he is making his appeal to the world through us. I, I have to say that again. We are God's personal representatives. Imagine that. You might recognize the scripture more by we are ambassadors for Christ. But the Amplified says we are God's personal representatives and he is making his appeal to the world through us. So this is my personal opinion, but I think it's important that we make a good representation the best that we can because we represent Jesus everywhere that we go. Amen? Amen. And if you don't take care of yourself, and I know if you're in here tonight and you're 20, you're like, boy, this is not for me. I, I feel great. Well, just hang around for 50 or 60 years. Man, all you old people. <laughs> I know when you're 20 or 30, you think you're gonna be that forever. But every year that goes by, whether you like it or not, you're another year older, <laughs> amen. amen. And I kind of feel like for about three decades, which would be 30 years, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I had a moment. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll just figure like the first 20 years, you're just going to school, you're getting started, but then 20, 30, 40, you're, you're full of dreams and visions and rawr, you have so much energy and you, you just can't, rawr, you're just gonna just take the world by storm. And so then you, you accomplish some things and you know, things are good and maybe you're married and you got a couple of kids and you got the house you wanted and all that. And then, so you kind of level out for a couple of years, say like, you know, 50, 60, <laughs> Everything's still good. The kids are raised now. They're gone, and then you're, you know, I was okay till I had to go sign up for Medicare, and then that was like <laughs> Medicare. I'm on Medicare, <laughs> and I was still, I was still good, and then seventy. 
71, 72. And then in four and a half months now, I'm gonna be 77. what David said. He said, once I was young and now I'm old. <laughs> and I thought, boy, it happens to everybody. <laughs> so please listen to me. If you listen to your body when it whispers, you won't have to listen to it scream. <laughs> Amen. So I'm just asking you to take better care of yourself. You're worth it. Now, Genesis 2, 2. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. Now, I wanna ask you, how can somebody who never gets tired need to rest? Because Isaiah 40 says that he never, he never grows tired, he never gets weary. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Well, I believe that God rested for two reasons. One is an example to us. And it also says that on the seventh day, he looked at all that he had created and he said, it is good. It is good. So I think on the seventh day, he took time to enjoy what he had done the other six days. And so I wanna ask you, do you even take time to enjoy the lovely home that you've worked so hard to get? Come on, I'm talking to you. I sit in my house sometimes and I just, you know, I'll just tell you, I just, I like my house. I like the way it's decorated. I like my fireplace. I like my recliner. <laughs> and I, sometimes I'll even go sit in another room for a little bit and think, boy, this is a pretty room. Thank you, God, for giving me this house. Do, do you, are you just raising your children or do you actually take the time to enjoy them. You know, I was a good mother, but, and, and I hope this doesn't sound as bad as it's probably gonna sound, but <laughs> I didn't enjoy my children when they were growing up. I was, I was too busy taking care of them. I didn't know how to be still and just really soak in all the cute things that they did. Well, I have 12 grandchildren now, so I'm getting a do-over, <laughs> amen? And we've, we've got a baby in our family that's gonna be six months old and he just was able to get his toe in his mouth the other day. <laughs> And it is so cute. And I thought, I wish I could still get my toe in my mouth. <laughs> but that's not working no way, no how. <laughs> Amen. It takes me about five stretches to be able to sit and finally touch my feet. <laughs> you know, people say, oh, you look so good for your age. Well, you know what? First of all, you should see it when it gets up. <laughs> Sometimes my body gets up and I feel like my brain stayed in bed. Do you ever know what I'm talking about? I mean like, now Dave, he gets up and he's like ready for music and wants to talk, talk, talk. And I'm like, Just give me a cup of coffee and let me sit in the corner. And... My brain's not up yet, Dave. So one of the messages tonight is 
Hard work is good. I mean, I've worked hard and I'm not sorry that I've worked hard, but I want you to listen to me. If you don't have a little balance, too much of any good thing makes it a bad thing. You hear me? You can eat dessert. I ate a piece of coconut cream pie last night. But I'm, I, I might do that every couple of months. I don't, you know, you, you, you can do all things in moderation, but when things get out of balance and you start to do them all the time, that's when they become a problem and they start controlling you rather than you controlling them. Amen? And we say, well, I just, if I eat one cookie, I gotta eat the whole bag. If I eat one chip, I gotta eat the whole bag. No, let's rewind this thing. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit and God lives in you. And how do you expect to have authority over the devil if you don't even have authority over a potato chip? Amen? Yes, bless God, the devil doesn't run me around. I've got authority over the devil. But if I, if I eat one cookie, I gotta eat the whole bag. Is that how long I got left or how long I've been going? <laughs> no, I need to know. How much I have left? I've got 13 minutes left. <laughs> Lord, help me. All right. The other reason why God rested on that seventh day because it was a foreshadowing of the complete rest that was going to be made available to us in Christ. A Sabbath rest is still available, Hebrews 4 says. It's still available and it says, don't miss it. You don't wanna miss the beautiful rest of God. But let me share with you what rest really is. It's not sitting in a chair, it's not laying down, it's not going and laying on the beach all day. Now that may help rest your body, but if you don't rest internally, see, some people take the day off so they can spend all day thinking about their problems and how they can solve them. <laughs> you know what I read yesterday? People in America are now so busy that a large percentage of people don't even take their paid vacations anymore. So they won't even take a day off, even if you pay them to take a day off, because they're too busy trying to climb the ladder of success. And I'll tell you what's gonna happen, when they get to the top, they're gonna find out their ladder's leaned against the wrong building. Jesus offers us an internal rest. He said, come unto me and I will give you rest for your souls. Eight hours of worry, how many of you worry? Eight hours of worry is equivalent to 40 hours of hard work. That's what it takes out of you. Eight hours of worry. Jesus said in Matthew 11, Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We always make a lot out of that, but the next part, I think, is even more important. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. What does he want us to learn? How he does things. Can you imagine Jesus being too busy? I mean, can you imagine him sounding like we do? Do you know when we see people now and they say, hey, John, how are you? Oh man, I'm so busy. 
how have you been? Well, I'm busy too. (laughs) It's pretty sad when the only thing we can say about our lives is we're busy. (laughs) And if somebody asks you, what'd you do yesterday? And if you happened by any chance to have taken a day off and did nothing, you're ashamed to say you did nothing (laughs) because we should be doing something. I had a little falling apart in January of 2017. And I won't get into all the details because I don't have time, but when I say I fell apart, I mean I fell apart. It was like I had some of the weirdest symptoms. My doctor looked at me and she said, I do not know what is wrong with you. And it was all basically caused from built up stress over years and years and years. And I had a pretty serious case of adrenal fatigue, which you don't come back from real fast. And so my doctor, doctors, there was three of them in the room, because I'd been in the hospital, had every kind of test you could have. And they looked at me and said, you are really healthy for a woman your age. (laughs) They said, your blood work is some of the best we've ever seen. And I thought, well, then why do I feel like I'm dying? Don't you hate it when you just feel so bad you can't hardly stand it and the doctor, or you feel so bad and everybody says, well, you you don't look, you you look like you feel great. (laughs) Doctor says, oh, you're in good shape. Anyway, my, um, my diagnosis was severe adrenal fatigue and my, um, along with some medicine they wanted me to take, I was also told that I needed to rest for 18 months. Now, do you know, I like, I almost couldn't even hear that. I was like, (laughs) you want me to what? I can't do that. They said, you can do what you absolutely have to do. Anything you can say no to, you need to say no to. You need to have quiet. You need to have peace. You need to eat good nutritional food. You need to get a lot of sleep. Well, I didn't even know what I absolutely had to do because I thought I absolutely had to do it all. You know, nobody can do it like you can, right? But you know what I found out? (laughs) Some of them did it better than I was. Because you know what? God can anoint whoever he wants to anoint. And it's not your great talent doing anything. It's God that has anointed you to do it. And if he moves his anointing, So here was the first thing I said. This is so funny. I said, what do you do when you rest for 18 months? <laughs> see, see what my problem was? What do you do when you rest? The whole point of rest is you don't have to do anything. I actually read an article yesterday that said, no, it was this morning. We no longer know how to be bored. (laughs) Because if we're waiting five minutes in the doctor's office, out comes the phone. Come on, we're gonna use that time to answer emails. You know, you can hardly have lunch with somebody anymore without them looking at their phone and texting while they're trying to talk to you. Anyway, now I have six minutes. Man. So we're not under the law concerning the Sabbath anymore, but I still think we need to honor the Sabbath. It was one of the 10 commandments and we don't think it's okay to murder somebody now. And we don't think it's okay to lie or to covet or to steal. So why do we think it's okay to never rest? Now I know the 20 year olds, I'm surprised you've stayed in here this long, but (laughs) if, if you don't get it now, just remember this sermon when you're a little older. But I love Jesus said, and this is so good. He said, 
The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath rest, that one day out of seven to rest, is actually a gift from God to us. It's a gift. And it's like, you owe your body one day a week. And some of you are seriously in debt. Yeah, uh uh-oh. Okay, what do I wanna do with my last few minutes here? You know, if anybody could have been stressed out, it would have been Jesus. Because he had a whole lot of stuff going on in his life. People didn't like him. His disciples couldn't get along. He had doubting Thomas and all the rest of them. And yet I can't even fathom him being in a hurry or being stressed or worried about anything. And in the midst of all that he had going on, he said this, recorded in John 14, 27, peace I leave with you. Is anybody in this building hungry for more peace in your life? Peace I leave with you. This is the Amplified. My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you, not as the world gives do I give to you, It's not a worldly kind of peace that only functions when everything is going right in your life, but this is a kind of peace that operates in the midst of the storm because no matter what kind of problems we have, if we can truly trust God with them. And I'm gonna be honest, it takes a few years to get to the point where you know God well enough and you've had enough experience with God to begin to be able to do that. I think sometimes, what good is it gonna do me to stand up here and tell people not to worry? The only way you're not gonna worry is to finally get to the point where you know that you're not smart enough to run run your own life and to solve your own problems and that only God can and that you might as well give your problems to Him and go ahead. He actually wants you, He actually wants you to enjoy your, do you know that it's okay to enjoy your life while you got a problem? Come on, let me tell this side. It's okay to enjoy your life while you have a problem. You don't have to be miserable and all sour-faced because you got a problem. The best thing you can do is to laugh. It makes the devil mad when you laugh. Because he doesn't care about your stuff, he wants your joy because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And you can't have joy if you don't have peace. I'm trying, brother, if I could just. (laughs) But now listen to this next part. So he's given us his peace. Now he says, stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. So now he's given me a responsibility. I've given you peace, now you need to hold on to it. And I know we think, I can't help it, I just get upset. Well, that's true, sometimes you get upset, you know, something happens, somebody runs into you in the grocery store with their grocery cart and it actually hurts because they hit your heel and right away you're like (laughs) But you can talk yourself down. Come on, I've learned how to talk myself off the edge of the cliff. Okay, Joyce. Let's get it in another gear here. Breathe. Believe the best. They didn't hit you on purpose. Keep your peace. Don't open the door for the devil. Be sweet. Come on, you, you can talk yourself into getting, well, that stupid woman, she hit me with that card on purpose and for two cents, I would just sue her and I'm not gonna put up with this. Come on. Oh, 
14 seconds. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Okay, listen, I don't know what peace is worth to you, but I will tell you this. If you wanna have peace, Jesus has given it to you, but you're gonna have to have it on purpose. So listen to this, start seeking God about what your peace stealers are. What are the things that Satan uses to steal your peace? If I get in a hurry and I have to hurry for a very long period of time, you can write it down, I'm gonna lose my peace. And we all have a whole list of things like that. And if you start finding out what your peace stealers are, then you can recognize when Satan is attacking you with them and you can say, been there, done that. I'm not spending my life like that anymore. I am going to live in peace. Amen. So take better care of yourself and get some of the stress out. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that you grabbed a hold of something that I said tonight that you can take home with you and begin to put to use in your life. I pray that you won't forget what you heard and that you won't just let it mean nothing to you, but you'll grab something and let God lead you in making some kind of a change for the better. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'll turn the service back over to you. Thanks so much for watching Christ Fellowship Church on YouTube. We hope that you've enjoyed this week's message. For more content just like this, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We hope you have a great rest of your week. God bless.